was born in the former Soviet Union and immigrated in 1989. As a child, my parents loved me very much and they gave up everything to bring me to this country. But in terms of, you know, giving things, it was a tough life. So when I arrived, I vowed that one day when I have children, I will give them everything that I possibly can in this beautiful country. And I did just that. When I had my first son, I signed him up for, um, you know, those library classes for Itsy Bitsy Spider. I didn't speak good English. So I sat there with wonderful American moms, and they did something like Itsy Bitsy Spider with their hands. And I was so worried because I didn't really know how it goes. So I like pretended that I knew what was happening. I was like praying, is he going to grow up normal? Because clearly, you know, I don't know the, the, the way this tune goes. And, um, you know, then there, 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 there is classes where you sign him up for dancing. The problem was he didn't know how to walk yet. So my husband and I um, signed our son, our oldest son, for the dancing class. And we put him standing in front of a column. And he fell onto it before the music started. So uh, I was, like, really trying to be, you know, the good mother for him. And then... Um, Everything I could do, like to buy the best toy in the terms that like it teaches you to speak languages and know colors. And my mom's like, it's really hard to grow up not smart in this country because every toy sings some kind of song and teaches you like triangle, one, two, three. It's been like many years my husband and I are sitting sometimes on the couch and we hear these songs that are just recurring like this poor child who would touch a toy and it would just sing for like... 45 to 60 seconds and it would repeat itself again and again and then one night you know I was laying in bed and I would be hearing this triangle one two three song and um, I was thinking to myself I'm probably hallucinating and then I would wake up and turn on the light and sit on the bed and then immediately would stop and then I would try to go back to sleep and it start again and I even woke up my husband and say am I hallucinating and he's like oh my god I hear it too <laughs> things are not good and then in the morning we found out that right outside of our bedroom door the, the child forgot this uh, little bus you know the wind would blow and this toy would move and thank god we were still okay because the music did turn on but then the wind would stop blowing and then would be quiet right and then the new gush of wind and it would start a new song because why repeat itself there's like 10 of them so um my younger child you know we upped it a bit because we were already like acquainted with the itsy bits of spider songs and things of that sort and at eight, he says, I think I want to be a computer programmer. And I'm like, oh, okay. I shouldn't stop any opportunities because I'm an immigrant and my parents love me but couldn't do these things for me. So I think I'm going to buy you a computer and I'm going to buy you like this program that teaches you how to become a computer programmer. And I gave it to him for his like eighth birthday. And he says to me, Ma, I'm eight. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, so, um, but then there's all these memory kids that I was so impressed with because living in the Soviet Union, no one was worried about memories. We were worried about survival, like now. Memory is like now. I'll remember you. There's no time for memory kids. So when my oldest one was three, I bought a memory kit, and the memory kit, you put like a glove on your hand, and you dip it into some cement, and then it says with huge, huge letters, make sure you put on a glove. But then, but then, um, you know, I really wanted to be like a really good mom, and I was in this huge rush to do this memory kit, and he was three, and he had really beautiful curls, and I, and I made the cement, and I put the hand without the glove, yeah, so, um, and then, um, and then he just had to sit there, you know, and, um, with this slug of cement, and then my immigrant dad, who, you know, sometimes we're like, oh, what do you know, and then he was visiting, and he's like, what are you guys making, and I said, a memory kit, he's like, is your child going to be a memory, like, part of the memory kit, what is this material, so, oh, this is America, I mean, like, Things are very thought of. Like, and he said, it says with huge letters, 
like glove. What is glove? So he like takes the tr dictionary. He's like, oh my god! So he tells the kid, see if you can get the hand out. And and thank God he was not um, cemented into the memory kit. <laughs> it was like still two minutes and ten seconds. I think that th after three minutes he would be forever in the memory kit. <laughs> So, you know, as, as my immigrants' parents, they saw me raise my kids, they were very proud because, like, no opportunity was lost. I, I really tried to go out there and, and, and do everything I possibly can. And interestingly enough, you know, the memories that kids remember are not necessarily things we buy for them. Now that they're older and I ask them, like, what's the best memory? And they're mentioning things that weren't necessarily expensive or things that you had to go out of your way. It's more of the, you know, quality time. That transcends culture and transcends where you come from. And my parents are proud of the kind of mother I was able to be to them and do all those things that are wonderful. But you know what, the essence of what I got growing up in a world where this did not exist is eternal. Because the eternal quality of love and connection between generations transcends everything. Thank you. Mm -hmm.